Greetings and welcome to 2023 here at Grace for the Nations Church. We're excited about what the Lord is doing in this space. Today marks the kickoff of something spectacular. We want you to consider joining us today, this evening at 7 o'clock p.m. at the start of our seven days of seeking God. For the next seven days with a day bonus from the 1st through the 8th, we're going to be um, assembling before the Lord every evening at 7 o'clock. We're also going to be praying every morning at 7 o'clock and then at noon there'll be a daily devotional. So from 7 to noon to 7 p.m. and even after our 7 p.m. service, we're going to have some seeking sessions. This week is going to be filled with consecration, with contemplation and intentionality in bringing ourselves before the presence of the Lord. So we invite you to come and join us. There's no cost at all for our seven days of seeking God. Um, if you've heard anything about grace, you know that we've been doing this for years, but each year gets better and better. We've got some dynamic people lined up to minister, to share. Tonight, for example, we're going to be blessed by a mighty, mighty man of God who's traveling all the way from out in the, the northwest of our country, and uh, he's going to be bringing the bread of life breaking the bread of life and helping to uh, set this tone. Now, the purpose behind our seven days of seeking God is so that we can do just that. Seek God's face. It's somewhat of a tithe. We are spending seven days, the first seven days in the presence of the Lord. And that's around the clock. That's through fasting. That's through uh, incremental times in which we will be assembling. But then there are times when we will do a lot of introspection. We'll get to do some journaling. We'll get to do some goals and, and pray over those. And we're going to do something on Saturday that's going to be uh, a blessing for leaders. We are going to be doing some teaching in the way of what leadership looks like going into 2023. So um, check out our webpage, www.gftnc.org and um, see what's going on. You can even register for various things that we've got happening at Grace. Follow us, like and share, but we just want you to know what's happening at Grace for the Nation's Church in 2023. Let's get into this word today and let's pray over it. I'm going to be sharing the first message of the year and subsequently throughout the year, you'll be hearing from various gifts in this body. We've got ministers and pastors and elders and teachers, missionaries, people who are well qualified to share the word of the Lord, but I wanted to set the tone for what we're focusing on for 2023. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and bless you for being our God. Thank you for bringing us into this new year. Thank you for the bright horizon that awaits us with what you have planned for us. Our eyes have not seen nor have our ears heard the things that you have in store for those who love you. Father, I pray today that this start of something new and special um, would just ignite a fire that will burn and continue to spread from us to our family, to our friends and loved ones. Even our enemies will know that we're burning with zeal and the excitement for the kingdom of God. I pray today that something said in some pulpit somewhere around this world, whether it's a great cathedral or around a small fire, whether it's in a cave or whether it's in a chapel, Father, I pray that you would send your word and heal your people from our destructions as it declares in your word, Father, and we thank you for it. Amen. I get excited about the word of the Lord, and um, starting this year off, I want us to focus and concentrate on advancing the kingdom agenda. We are advancing the kingdom agenda. But in order to do that, we have to reimagine the grace of God. The Bible tells us that our salvation is given to us by the grace of God as a gift. And if that's the case, we can say appreciatively, thank you for the gift. But I don't know if you're like me, you had some kids who got gifts on Christmas, which was less than five days ago, and now those gifts no longer have the same significance or the same importance. So we value and devalue gifts differently. I hope that we could take the time to focus on the gift of salvation and allow it to have its transformative work in us so that throughout the year, we're still gleaning from the gift of Christ, but we're also producing gifts as a result of that gift of Christ. It's called grace. And as we reimagine this, as we look at grace as being something more than simply God's favor upon us or God withholding judgment when we were deserving of, of every judgment that could come our way, that, that, that doesn't completely describe the grace of God. You see, the grace of God is the gift that gives us the ability and the capacity to go beyond our natural capacity, to go beyond what we can do on our own, to go beyond what we have within our own volition or of our own capacity. It stretches us. It literally morphs us into this supernatural creature that has now been filled with the presence and the power of the one true and only living God. And so the grace of God is more than just, oh, he didn't kill me and I made it to 2023. 
The grace of God is that he didn't kill you. You made it to 2023, but you also have been endowed with a certain amount of power to accomplish a specific gift or a specific assignment of which only you can do through the grace of God. I want to read some scripture in the book of Titus. We don't preach out of Titus very much, but Titus was a a compatriot of Paul, and he was um, um, one who had been sent as a messenger to share the good news to people in various, various isolated places, but he has a very strong message to describe the grace of God. So if we're advancing the kingdom agenda as they did in these days, and if we're reimagining grace, it would do us well to learn how to apply it specifically to our lives. Titus, the second chapter, verses number uh, 11 through 14 says this, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, meaning everybody has an opportunity to, uh, to participate in the grace of God. Verse number 12 says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13 says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 14 says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify us unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So, so that, that's the sum total of where God is taking us through the things that he's done, the salvation that was given to us through Jesus Christ, but he's taken us to do some great and spectacular things as a peculiar and called out people. So we need to make some declarations for 2023. We need to declare that what was in 2020, 2021, and 2022, we left behind. We need to declare that anything that attached itself to us in former days or in past days is no longer attached to us. And now we're standing in liberty wherewith we've been set free in Christ and not being entangled again with the yokes of bondage. We need to also declare and decree that everything that has any connection to us will be sanctified by the power of this salvation that we now have. Remember, the scripture declares that the grace of God brings salvation or causes salvation to appear unto all humanity. Everybody will have an opportunity to see salvation, but will they see it through you? Let's make some declarations. Let's declare that not only are we going to be good church-going Christians in 2023, but we'll be good examples of what it means to be Christians, whether we're in the church or outside of the church, whether we're in the grocery store or whether we are in a worship experience. Let us declare and decree that the sickness that had been pronounced upon our bodies will no longer stick and that there'll be miracle working situations that occur and that will amaze even the medical professionals that have been given by God to do the work that they do. Let's declare and let's decree that our finances and our income will line up and match up with our identity as a royal priesthood and a holy nation and a peculiar people who've been called from darkness into light. So we speak light on finances, we speak light on our health, we speak light on our relationships, we speak light on the things that concern us as we carry out the assignment that God has given us for our lives to help advance the kingdom agenda. I want to admonish and encourage everyone who's going along for this journey. Our spiritual journey entails us going through trials, tests, and sometimes even tribulation. But our spiritual journey promises to deliver us into a fullness of the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. The journey promises that we will have what we ask for that is according to the will of God. And our spiritual journey also tells us that when we seek Him first and we put the things of the kingdom before anything else, everything else will be added to our lives. So as we start this new year, as 2022 is gone and we go into this new year, embracing the assignment to advance the kingdom agenda. We're also compelled to reimagine how God is going to bless us next and what is going to happen. You see, I'm a firm believer that we've been given the gift of imagination for a reason. It's not just to fantasize, but it's a creative power that's much like the power of God when he created the heavens and the earth. Think about how uniquely he created each one of us. So we know that God is a creative I know it was a popular thing over the last couple of years for people to identify as a creative. Some people quit their jobs and started their own businesses because they're creatives. Well, let me tell you, you didn't get that because you sat on the side of your bed um, dreading to uh, get to work and punch the clock. 
What happens is that we identify with the God character that's on the inside of us. And that God character on the inside of us empowers us by His grace to be like Him. The Bible says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, but it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, talking about Christ, we shall be like Him and we'll see Him as He is. But we will also be known by our transformation of reflecting the character of Christ. And in that is creative power. Creative power to speak those things that be not as though they were, like God did. Creative power to say to mountains, be removed and cast into the sea. Creative power to be able to draw on all of the sources and the resources of heaven to appropriate our faith in situations where we can be a blessing to somebody else. So as we start this year out, and as we uh, continue on our journey, let us grow, let us mature, let us develop, let us saturate the places that we're in and leave the smear of the anointing everywhere that we go. We should be so anointed that we're dripping with the presence of God's grace and we leave it everywhere we go. I was at a Christmas celebration and um, I walked into the room and was laughing at the host and said, you're going to have time cleaning that up. Somebody had sprinkled glitter all over the table as decoration. And it seems like a nightmare for somebody in the, in the catering business or somebody in, in the facilities. Um, they have to clean up the glitter because it gets on everything. It's on the seat. It's on their clothes. It's on your hair. It's on, it, it, it's, it sticks to your body. I, I saw somebody, they were actually glittering on their face and it wasn't intentional. And that's because that glitter is such fine pieces of, of, of metallic that it sticks to everything. The anointing of God should be like that. We should glow with the anointing of God. So as we make these declarations and as we embark upon 2023, I admonish and encourage you sincerely to ask God, which way should I go? What is it that you would have me to do? And what is it that I am specifically assigned to do with this grace that you've given to everyone to obtain salvation? And salvation, of course, being given to us as the grace that we need to fulfill our assignments in the earth. Because the kingdom of God is widely mistaken to be just a group of church people we are compelled to expand on the understanding and the definition of what it really means for us to be kingdom-minded. Here's some clarity as we close. There's both a physical as well as a spiritual manifestation of God's authority in the earth. You're the physical manifestation of God's authority in the earth as a believer. Jesus says, greater works than the works that I did shall you do. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, and that power I give to you, which means we represent the physical authority of God in the earth, our presence alone. But the invisible manifestation of God's presence and power is His sovereignty. It's the principal understanding of God being God and man being man, that God created man and that God is not a man, that God is superior and God is, is inferior to none, and that there is no other way by which we can make it into the presence of God but except through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so when we recognize the kingdom as those things, what happens is that we engage spiritual warfare. And the warfare that we fight is not a flesh and blood battle. It's not the physical war, but it's spiritual. It's a spiritual war of which there's spiritual weaponry and we have spiritual armor. But in battling spiritually, we must have a very sound mind. So I encourage you to declare and decree every day that my mind is sound and I have this victory over spiritual warfare in my mind. The battlefield is in your mind. I want to encourage you also that as you practice your faith with some tradition, lay a hold to the rhema, the new fresh experiences of God, as opposed to the nostalgia of days gone by. You see, if we keep doing the same thing, we'll keep getting the same thing. And if we go back to what we had before that didn't work, it's not going to work now. It doesn't just start working because we pick it up and do it again. Pre-COVID, we had an opportunity to clean the slate and do things a little bit differently. Post-COVID, we now have no other choice but to create new paradigms, to shift and to move into new systems and new processes by which we can strategically grow and develop the salvation that's on the inside of us. Looking to Jesus, of course, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So I believe that the church has been challenged. And I, and I, and I drop these words on you. Because of the pandemics, because of wars, because of the increase of carnality, because of the increase of mental illness and emotional breakdowns in people, because of the popular influences that limit the church's identity, we have 
an extra weighted responsibility to be the kingdom of God, to advance the kingdom of God, to ex advance the agenda and to exercise our, our rights in the kingdom to have authority over sickness, death, destruction, and disease. So I strongly admonish you to reimagine what it is that God has called us as a body of believers to do in advancing the kingdom of God and advancing his agenda in the earth. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for our time in your word. And I thank you for every believer, everyone watching, everyone under the sound of my voice. Whenever this is being watched, I pray that there's this witness and that there's this registering of the Holy Spirit that simply says deep calls unto deep. I am compelling believers to take seriously these next seven days and start the year out with a focused concentration and a consecration unto you. Father, I'm compelling believers at grace and affiliated with grace to turn down our plates and seek your face and to give you the opportunity to just move in our lives in miraculous and powerful ways. Father, it's not about just getting things and being blessed with all of the materialisms of this world, but having the spiritual peace and shalom of being completely whole, nothing missing and nothing broken. That's what I pray for your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching and tuning into Grace for the Nation's Church. Again, join us tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. for our first night of our seven days of seeking God. We're going to go all the way through till next Sunday, and I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. Until next time, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to our online service. Maybe there was something that you heard today that really touched you or uh, moved your heart. It's always a good idea to seal that with prayer. Or maybe you've decided that it's time for you to give your life to the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you're saved. And that's it. It says that anybody that calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter um, what you think about yourself. God said it and so we should believe it. So I wanna pray for you so that you have the opportunity to um, experience the love and joy and peace that comes with having Christ in your heart. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us all the opportunity to um, accept you into our hearts and that you have made um, us free from our past, things that we've done that we're not proud of. Lord God, I thank you that we're able to um, confess with our mouths and to uh, believe in our hearts and, and you will accept us into your family. So God, I pray that uh, for that person out there who is interested in um, growing in their faith, Lord, I pray that they will repeat after me, Heavenly Father, um, I believe who you are. I believe that Jesus is Lord and I want him to enter into my heart. I believe of the sacrifice that was made on the cross on my behalf. And Lord, I just ask that you forgive me of my sins and that you welcome me into your family. Lord God, we love you, we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And that concludes our live streaming service here at Grace for the Nations Church, but it doesn't have to stop your connection with us. If you're interested in finding out more about Grace for the Nations Church, visit our website at www.gftnc.org. But we also invite you to come and visit us in person. We have service here every Sunday at one o'clock, and you are sure to be blessed by the experience that takes place at Grace for the Nations Church. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but we also serve a community worldwide. So stay tuned, tune in on all of our social media platforms, and remember that at Grace, it's our endeavor to reach the diverse people of the world by teaching biblical principles and life application of scripture. Despite the present day challenges that face individuals, families, and our communities, we believe there is hope. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for our friends who've gathered with us electronically and on social media and our other platforms. We ask that you would touch, bless, and minister to them even as we go about our daily tasks in this world. We ask the grace of God to be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.